have prepared in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You may be seated. All right. We began a teaching yesterday. I took it from my research archive. Uh, well, for those of you that were not here, I want to bring you up to speed. So you may wish to go to the book of Genesis chapter 26 so that you will understand where God is taking us as a people. And this is our story. And this scripture most graphically illustrates our journey into 2021 as a people and as a ministry. And Isaac's servants, Genesis 26 verse 19 for those who were not here. Isaac's servants digged in the valley and found there a well of springing water. And the headsmen of Gerah digged strive with Isaac's headmen, saying, The water is ours. And he called the name of the well Isaac, because they strove with him. Next verse there. And they digged another well, and for that also he, for that, and strove for that also, and he called the name of it Sitna. We have passed through these two places as a ministry. Isaac talks about strive. Sitna talks about contention. And we have gone beyond strive. We have gone beyond contention. And I had the release to share some personal experiences that I've had along the way. But all of that was necessary for that which God was about to do. Verse 22 said, And he removed from thence and digged another well, and for that they strove not. And he called the name of it Rehoboth. And he said, For now the Lord has made room for us, and we shall be fruitful in the land. So that's what 2021 is for us. We're entering into room. We're entering into a place that can adequately support our corporate calling. We're entering into a season where there will be reinforcement and support for the mandate that God has given us to be expressed full strength. Rehoboth. For the Lord has made room for us. So that's the mind of God for us next year. That's why we're praying. That's why we're fasting. We're fasting so that we can break loose from the limits that have occasioned themselves as barricades that seek to stop us from entering into the room that God has given us. Now that you understand that, we did a lecture yesterday and we began to talk about witchcraft. It was a presentation. And part of what will want to manipulate to you so that you don't enter into what the season holds is called witchcraft. We began a study on what witchcraft really is. And uh, from my research, uh, and after the service yesterday, there were so many WhatsApp messages pleading that I should continue this study, even though I had wanted to put an end to it at this point. But, um, how did I say it again in football? They say, based on popular demand, we have decided to... Uh, all right, so, no, it's a lost will for us to continue, so we will continue. We began to talk about paganism, and what did I say paganism was? What? If you are bold and you know you know what you're talking about, you may wish to raise your hand and then we'll give you an opportunity. But ushers, make sure you put them on mic. Give them a microphone so that we can put it on record that there were people that were partakers of the lecture, but they were absent-minded. So the subject matter, <laughs> they had no grasp on the subject matter. Yes, 
What is paganism? Somebody help us if you. Ah, all right. You, no, you don't. You just sit down. Sit down. And what do you understand by paganism? Praise the Lord. Ah, okay, yesterday, um, according to what you taught us, you said that paganism is the name given to a religion other than the Abrahamic faith. Uh, 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 did you hear him? Okay. Paganism mm -hmm. is another name for religion other than the Abrahamic faith, which include um, the, the Judaism, Islamic, and Christianity. Any other, any other uh, religion wait, at all? Wait, wait, wait. Paganism is not a religion. So you were not following. See, you, you understand what I taught. But in order for you to communicate what I taught, you must understand the core points, the power points, the context in which these power points exist, and the registers by which they can be communicated. It is one thing for you to know something. It's another thing for you to have the ability to communicate it. All right. It's uh, not necessarily a religion, even though we can say religion. Hmm? But it's beyond religion. It, there are practices that are contrary, practices and beliefs that are contrary to the beliefs of the Abrahamic faiths. Exactly. Religions, practices, and what? Beliefs that are contrary to the Abrahamic faith. And the bottom line of these beliefs is that they entertain what is called polytheism. Many gods, a many god scenario. And the reason for these many god possibilities is because there are many spirits. And we were able to present a very critical scripture. That in any synagogue you visit, this scripture must be read out. And that is Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 4, which is a clarion call to all of Israel to acknowledge how that our Lord is one Lord. Whereas the pagan believes in spirits as deities, and the pagan had discovered by reason of experiential interface how that spirits do not have abilities in the same area. So they have spirits of the river. You must have watched Odysseus, Poseidon, spirits of the river. So you need to make sacrifices if you want to travel to the spirits of the river so that they can ensure that there will be no wind on the river for you to have a smooth sail. They even have a god of love. I think that's Aphrodite. So if you, is the one that manipulates somebody to love you. <laughs> May the Lord give, give us understanding. So, so if you want somebody badly, you go to Aphrodite and you offer a sacrifice and, you know, that deity knows what to do to secure the affection of the person in question. So uh, that was paganism. And the civilization that paganism produced is a civilization of manipulation, dominion, and utter wickedness. And that was the state of things until our Lord Jesus Christ decided to come upon the scene. Paganism is by no means uh, in short of types. There are different types of paganism consistent with regions and areas of the world in which it is practiced. Uh, are you with me? You are not with me? Now listen. Let me give you one scripture before we continue. The scripture we read yesterday before we begin to make progress. Micah chapter 5 verse 12. Micah chapter 5 verse number 12. And I will cut off witchcrafts out of thy hand, and thou shalt have no more soothsayers. So, witchcrafts we have there is in plural, if you want to notice. 
It means there are many ways of achieving witchcraft, and witchcraft is a broad spectrum of uh, spiritual possibilities that occasion manipulation, that occasion control, that occasion dominion. And they, they are in the plural because there are no shortage of types. Just like there are no shortage of, of types in terms of witchcraft, there are no shortage of types in terms of uh, paganism because spirits are many. Right? And we see some practices. I hope I can pronounce all these things I wrote here. All right. In modern America, and um, yeah, this is associated with America, mostly and Mexico. Mexico. Uh, they call paganism weaker. I, I, I don't have time to give you the historical perspective of how it evolved until it became weaker. Okay, so they call it Wicca. In uh, the Caribbean islands, we're talking about uh, the Bahamas, St. Kitts and Nevis, and all those Caribbean places. Paganism is called Brugeria. B-R-U-J-E-R-I-A, Brugeria. In French, is Exeria. In German, is Stregoneria. And then we have the one that we grew up in, which is African paganism. Now, because of the broad spectrum, I had to study in order to find the common denominators so that I can bring some light to us on how to defeat these kind of practices according to the revelation of the word of God. Now, the Bible says that we should not be ignorant of the devices of the enemy. So I'm going to take um, I'm going to take 35 minutes to run a lecture. Are you with me? Just a lecture. Then when I'm done with the lecture in, in 35 minutes time, we will Pray. So, afford me 35 minutes for a lecture. The next topic on my research material is called Demonic Supernatural Phenomena. Demonic Supernatural Phenomena. Once upon a time, the a chief executive was given an appointment. Are you with me? And he happened to be a member of our church, the church I attended in Abuja at the time. Came to church, celebrated the appointment, gave thanksgiving. Him and his wife were a so they see the church prayed. And he went to the office on Monday. And when he sat on the seat of his new status, he became crippled. What's the name of that? It's a miracle. Or it's a demonic miracle. I, you know, in a miracle, somebody can't walk. You pray for the person, it walks. That's a divine miracle. It's just that you think that only miracles only exist in the divine side. That was a demonic, a demonic miracle. <laughs> he lost the ability to walk just because he sat on his seat. And seats don't make people cripple. But it's a demonic supernatural phenomenon. Are you with me? Now, my objective is to give us enlightenment. There are many aspects of these operations that I found in my little journey preaching the gospel. So I decided to do a good study on all of those aspects and to also provide the antidote for any such oppression from the limits of my revelation of the word of God. The first one we see in Africa is called magic. And I need to define what magic is. What is magic? Magic is looking to spirits and invincible forces to influence events, effect changes, in natural conditions 
or to present an illusion of change. I come again. Magic is looking to spirits and invincible forces to influence events, effect changes in material conditions, or present an illusion of change. Did you get that? Now, sometimes, are you with me? You know, I added something to this definition. I said, sometimes magic presents an illusion of change, an illusion of change. Just like a man had admission to study in Georgia, the admission letter came to him. He received it through post, but he never read it because every time he read it, it was not admission letter he was seeing. He was seeing something else. It was an illusion that he was seeing. He was under the spell of magic. It was when the window of the admission passed that he now discovered three years later that that document that was on his table was actually an admission letter. Now, you are, not, are you with me? Okay. Now, I want to, the reason for the education you will find out, I want you to gain mastery, to be a master of, of, of turning over attempts at managing and manipulating your life using spiritual influences. I want you to gain mastery of that. And I will tell you symptoms that suggest that you are being manipulated. There are symptoms. Some of this I know by experience. Others I know by scripture. Are you with me? Now, types of magic. Before we go into practices that are classified as magic, I need to show you quickly types of magic. We have the first type of magic is what we call the protective magic. Protective magic. So in the protective magic, what happens is maybe the first born died, the second born died, the third born died, and the only person that was left, they now take the person to fortify the person against death. That's protective magic. Exactly. The second one is called productive magic, the kind of magic that can produce something. Like they say, okay, you kill your first child, put the person in a room, in a coffin, and then when you go into the coffin, you light a red candle and make some incantations, and then that dead child will begin to vomit money. That magic produces something. Are you with me? And then the third type of magic is called destructive magic. Now, so we have two. Are you there? The first and the second type is what we call white magic. The protective and the productive kind of magic is called white magic because there is an attempt. Are you with me? There's an attempt in the current time to make you feel that there is... Magic has a good side. Make you feel that Satan has a good side. We can benefit from Satan. So the protective and the productive aspect of magic is what is called white magic. And there is a desperate attempt to sell this aspect of demonic possibilities. And many pastors, so-called pastors, have brought into church white magic. And if you are a victim of a church that is pastored by a spiritist that uses the handle of white magic, what happens is that he places a curse upon you. Have you realized? I, no. I won't say that. Then the destructive magic is what we call the black magic. So even in civilized societies, they don't do this one openly. They do this one in hiding. But meanwhile, in Africa, this is the type that is predominant in Africa. It's called black magic. And they do it purposely for destructive purposes. So that people will not marry. 
so that in, just in case you get married, you'll not be able to take in something that is destructive. And so people that, that do this destructive acts aspect, they do it under the cover of darkness, so hidden until recently where another name for destructive magic is what we call satanism. It's, it's a religion. It's a worship. It's a worship. So they have now brought it into full view at this time. Most of our movies have a color of magic because they are trying to reintroduce magic to sell magic so that we will be able to decipher between magic and accept that not every aspect of magic is bad. You must have heard that magic, yes, my audience in the UK can confirm that, magic is, was taken as a course in, in, in university in the United Kingdom and the first graduates came out in 2020. Hmm. I know you don't read your news. You are just moving around in Wuruku. <laughs> May the Lord give you understanding. Amen. All right. So, are you, are you there? I don't want to press further. Because there's a lot of these practices that have been brought to church right now. A lot of it has been brought to church. Meanwhile, you must understand that the nature of witchcraft is that it manipulates it dominates and it controls. Even we as pastors, when we want to suggest a lady to someone to marry, we don't impose. The best we do is to recommend so that the person can go process it, process it by his own spirit and get a witness from God. Because in New Testament theology, a believer doesn't rule another believer by his spirit. The economy of God that is in your spirit is unique to your spirit and it has all the potential that is needed for the infrastructure of divine direction. The best another person's spirit can bring to you is a confirmation. Are you with me? So even when you are recommending something, you don't press it too hard so that it doesn't become control, doesn't become dominion. Hallelujah. Meanwhile, it's easier to get people to do what you want when you apply dominion. Meanwhile, you have gone out of your boundary and what you are doing can no longer be supported by the Spirit of God. Have you ever heard a pastor say, don't travel, nobody should travel. You make sure. He has gone off. And if he begins to open his spirit and wants to achieve that again and again and again, you will not even know when he becomes an instrument of control. And, that, and at that point where you are controlling in a situation where the Holy Ghost is not controlling, what you are practicing is witchcraft. And it's so subtle, there's a thin line. Except you know Jesus and you decide that you will not manifest anything that is not consistent with the nature of God. That's the only way you can have a ministry that is a wellspring of life. The devil seeks to pollute, to confuse, and to contaminate. And in situations where he cannot destroy, what he does is that he contaminates and reduces the value. So there are many ministries that started with great potency that were brought to a point of total irrelevance. It was because of contamination. As we guard against the excesses that are associated with our office and our mandates, God ensures that he gives us more of his resources to prosecute the enforcement of his will upon the face of the earth. And so every believer must understand that we need to keep the boundaries of the Holy Spirit so that we not become uh, guilty of trespass. All right, so we have what? Protective magic. We have productive magic. And then we have what? Destructive magic. I met a lady before, and it, she was in our fellowship in the choir, and she was doing very well in the choir. And one day we prayed the way we, we, we normally do not pray in fellowship that day. We prayed. In fact, we started the fellowship two hours before the time, and we started it with prayer. By the time she came for fellowship, she didn't know that the environment 
our corporate collective hunger had drawn the hand of God and missed us, and it was trapped in that meeting. And while we prayed intensely, the hand of God descended upon the lady. First of all, for two hours, she was knocked out. And after two hours, the parents came and, because it was a police barrack, they arrested me and said, revive this. This lady was alive before she came for Hallelujah. She was alive before she came for your fellowship. Do you kill people here? So I myself was taken aback. And we began to ask God for mercy. Have mercy. Myself. So when we did that mercy prayer for like 35 minutes, she sneezed and she revived. And then the police people now left. So when we interviewed her, she said she had a power. And that power was in her eyes. That if you make her angry, she will afflict you. So her mother has received the most impact <laughs> from that ability. Because her mother makes her angry almost all the time, so he afflicts her with, with, with sickness. There are some sicknesses that you may be experiencing. If you go to the doctors, they won't find anything. It's not plasmodium falciparum. May the Lord give you understanding. <laughs> And she was in church. Now believe me, believe me, if there is anyone among us here right now that has a power that is demonic induced and you have retained that power, you are not born again. Don't deceive yourself. You know I told you that I'm from the field. I'm a field marshal. Theologians that are in the seminary don't know what I'm teaching you. Theologians will say, Hallelujah, 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 Hallelujah. <laughs> That's not what I brought. I brought practicals. <laughs> <coughs> May the Lord give you insight. <laughs> hallelujah. We had to lead this girl to Christ again. When she accepted that he was willing to give up that ability. Right? We had to lead her to Christ and she wept when the power left her, that ability left. That was when we admitted her again into our fellowship as born again. For your information, her father was a pastor. Just in case you need that angle. Her father was a pastor. So all the prayers at home didn't affect the commodity. She can do something like praying, as if she's praying, as if she's praying. And she, she was able to beat all our defenses in terms of discernment. Until that day when the hand of the Lord came. And when it came, the truth came out. So the yoke was broken. She became released. Many years later, I saw her in her matrimonial home, living in peace. And people were not falling sick on the account of Amen. All right. So that thing she was doing was destructive magic. The thing about magic is it is addictive. When you begin to use it, you would like to use it. That's why someone that has gone to, con to consult an oracle, the, the appetite to consult oracles is more addictive than cigarette. He has gone to consult The truth is that the person has been going to consult thereafter. They don't consult once. If you have already started, it's just like someone that goes to gamble. There is nobody that has faith more than a gambler. He has lost 10,000. He believes that the next 10,000 is going to. And so we came to church here one day, and one pastor visited us here. After church, he just came close to me and said, I have not eaten. My wife has not eaten. I said, What? I gave him 10,000 and he went straight to gamble. <laughs> Niger bet. Champions League was, 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 was on, so the voting possibilities were abounded. And instead of him to gamble 5,000, <laughs> he gambled 10,000. <laughs> and he came back again and said, Yes, he, he was bold. I was still counseling people. He had gambled and lost the 10,000 and he, and, he, and he came back and said, I made a mistake somewhere here. 
If God, the reason why they keep going back is because it's addictive. You will need deliverance. You will need deliverance from that appetite in order for you to be free. If not, the moment you have money in your pocket, the spirit of gambling will just come on you and you will find yourself at OG winners. <laughs> Magic is addictive. That's why people that start never stop. It will take a whole lot of spiritual energy in deliverance to dissociate someone that has begun to seek wisdom, knowledge from demons to desist. Part of the reason why there's so much contention in Africa. Yes, the poverty was in the matter. But beyond the poverty... Our people on the continent of Africa decided to seek knowledge through spirits. And there happens to be a generational possibility behind that kind of enterprise. And so people that take care of shrines, that speak to spirits, when they're about to die, they look for someone to continue their trade. A woman was speaking to me that her Mother-in-law was told by the spirit that she was going to die and she began to say, who will help me paddle my canoe? Who will help me paddle my what? So she did not understand the language of the wise. She thought it was a physical canoe. Because when, when, you, when you enter the school of magic, they will teach you the language. It goes with a language. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. If you are not initiated, you won't know, you won't know what they are saying. You will see three old men say, Kai, we are feeling cold. What they are telling you is that it's been long since somebody died. We need to put one firewood. One firewood. One firewood. Ah! Where can we find firewood? Meanwhile, there's are, there are firewood everywhere. You say, Kai, we need. That's destructive. Destructive kind of witchcraft. Let me read something to you from my notes quickly. Practices classified as magic include, number one, divination. Number two, astrology. Number three, alchemy. Number four, sorcery. Number five, necromancy. Necromancy, divination, astrology, alchemy, sorcery, and necromancy. Are you still with me? All right. So, what is divination? Turn with me in your Bible to the book of Acts, chapter 16. What is divination? What powers do a diviner have? Sixteen verse sixteen. Acts chapter sixteen verse sixteen. And it came to pass as we went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with a spirit of divination met us, which brought our masters much gain by soothsaying. Now, I need to explain to us quickly. Are you still with me? Please stay with me. The lecture is just for 35 minutes. When I'm done, we'll begin to pray. Whether or not I finish is not the issue. Someone possessed with the spirit of divination can operate like a prophet. Because the closest relative to prophecy that the kingdom of darkness is capable of, it's soothsaying. And soothsaying is the expression of the wisdom of the spirit of divination. Exactly? Now, give me that scripture. Let me educate us before we go forward. So, first of all, one of the things about soothsaying is that it is an avenue through which you can, the practitioner can gain a lot of money. Money. Get that? You are, you are not with me. You're not with me. 
Now, we need to take a very good inventory because somewhere on the continent of Africa, there, was, there became a surge of people claiming to be prophets. So we need to run a check because the Bible says that we should test all things and hold on to that which is good. Part of the abilities that this lady had because she was possessed with the spirit of divination was the ability to make money, a lot of gain for her masters. So you need to take note. When the whole thing is about seed, raising seed, raising fund, raising stuff, you have not yet raised men. There's no man you have raised, but you have raised so many seeds. We don't have an inventory of people that came to you and after being with you for a while, they were so influenced that they began to prosecute destiny as God has mandated them. Because the proof that we are doing ministry is life transformation. It is only the Holy Ghost that can transform a life through a mandate that it commits to a man in a ministry. When you see transformation, it's evidence of the fact that there's a valid call that Jesus has bestowed upon a man and he has a bountiful supply of the spirit of grace to prosecute it. That's the only way transformation can take place. Are you with me? Second point. When someone is operating with the spirit of divination, the spirit feeds on immorality. Do you understand what I'm talking about? It does, it does what? It feeds on immorality. So when you hear of a prophet that has a bag, a bag of secret immoral testimonies, which, if, which you cannot hide, which will eventually come to limelight anyway. It's a proof of the fact that that person is not operating by the Holy Ghost. It's operating by the spirit of divination. Because the more you operate in the insight that comes from that spirit of divination, the more the appetite to indulge in immorality finds expression. In fact, at some point in your operation, you need to have a lady stationed before you go to the altar. And another one stationed when you come back. If not, the spirit will make you run mad. So there are a lot of ladies in the enterprise, wounded, battered, battered. You know, all kinds of ladies, just to feed the insatiable appetite of the spirit of what? Divination. When the Bible spoke about the prophet Samuel, the first thing the Bible said about him was his character. So we check prophets by character before we look at the gift. Because the gift, if you don't have discernment of spirit, sometimes the oppression of, of Seeming prophetic oppression by the spirit of divination sounds and looks like prophecy. So don't look at the gift. You can be confused. Look at the life first. Do you understand? Look at the life. And that's why we cannot accept anybody in the body of Christ to be a prophet if he doesn't have at least a track record of holiness, purity for at least 10 years. The Bible says, not a novice lest he be puffed up and he fall into the snare of the devil. You should have like 10 years of accurate work with God under the supervision of leaders and they have seen the projection of your spirit in his capacity to use the handle of revelations. Then we know that upon you is the spirit that reveals your number among the prophets. It doesn't happen suddenly. You are not with me. There's someone that became sick, so they took the person to the village, believing that the person would die. So when they got to, got to the village, people came to greet the person, all kinds of people came to greet the person, and suddenly the person recovered. Recovered in two days. Someone that was near death. And with the recovery was... This was the ability to see things. The person came back and started a ministry. And crowds gathered. You know, I told you that a prophet doesn't just suddenly appear. 
In fact, in your, the first six years of your journey in the Lord, you will not be gifted. You will just see dreams sparingly. Little dreams sparingly that are weak. So weak that you can despise them. Satan will make advances at you to make you love money initially. If you pass that first test, God will give you something more of the grace. Then the second attraction will be women. They will come massively. Anywhere you go, you find one that is willing to lead you astray. And that test, you will continue for like seven years. Hmm. I know there's no amen left. So <laughs> let me not afflict you much. I know you want to come and say, okay, the, the, the prophet of the land that demons will look for you in the night. You know that thing we do on Facebook? Um, worry. We come in the name of the Lord. That, Hallelujah. Divination. It is a practice of determining the hidden significance of things, cause of events, and sometimes foretelling the future. Let me explain. Because in most of our cultures, the use of divination is when someone dies. Maybe the person is believed to have died prematurely. So the elders want to find out the reason why the person died. So while they are doing the burial, on the left-hand side, you'll find some people under a mango tree on the right. Those ones are the two warlocks of the two families. And they are asking, how did this death take place? And the person that is responsible will own up in that assembly. All right, you have taken from where you have no right. It means we have two entrances into your family. And the destinies of men are decided under the tree. Why they, and they only come out during burials. That is, it's, they come out with their regalia. They come out fully kitted. Because there's going to be a discussion. And that discussion is going to create an inroad into another family. Just because somebody... It's not as if they love this person that died. though, But the death is an occasion for them to make demands. I speak as one that has been on the field. All right? And they discuss that there. It means they have two seasons to come and bring debt. And the reason for which they need to press to get opportunities to bring debt is because the altar that is in the family that they have used to sponsor somebody's wealth needs blood every other year. So those negotiations are to Trap opportunities where they can kill. The kind of killing that has the support of the elders of the family. Such killings are like mysteries. So there is this thing that divination provides is a possibility for you to find knowledge. And it is the lust for knowledge that drives people into the search of divination. Just like in the Garden of Eden, Satan wanted to bring an attraction that would make Adam to want the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And he told Adam, he said, in the day that you eat of this fruit, God doth know. God is aware that there is a layer of knowledge that you cannot access until you have access to this fruit. Is this fruit that is going to be the gateway into that knowledge bank. It means that the advertisement that Satan brought to Adam was an advertisement about a hidden knowledge. That's what divination gives anyone that subscribes to it. Divination promises to give you access to a hidden knowledge. You know why your father died. You know why the firstborn of the family died at the age of two. You know what happened. Why is it that it's only girls that your mother gave birth to? So divination promises to be able to give us explanations for why events took place 
And it also has the potential to foretell the future. If you begin to travel around, maybe you will start buying things from a lot of places. You might find, stumble on a diviner. You came there to buy something and then you say, can I check your palm? Mind you, if the person reads your palm, a curse falls on you. If the person does, you might, you might feel, okay, there is that same lust for knowledge is what was in your heart. I said, what? Yeah, yeah, doesn't look bad. There's no scripture that condemns that. It won't affect my salvation. But what you have done is, is as good as going to consult a herbalist in your village. Because divination always comes with the promise of giving you access to a certain kind of hidden knowledge. Are you with me? Meanwhile, the Bible says that eyes have not seen. It says ears have not heard. Neither, neither has he entered into the heart of man the things that God will do for them that love him. The true custodian of secret is the Holy Ghost. For, but he has revealed this thing unto us by his spirit. And he went further to say, we have received not the spirit which is of this world. Because he's trying to make you understand that, hey, just in case you came from a family of diviners, what we are talking about is not the abilities of a spirit which is of what? Of this world. Because the wisdom that comes from the spirit of this world, the Bible says, it cometh to nothing. Over time, you will know that you wasted life and wasted time in pursuit of the knowledge that comes from the devil. Over time, you will find out. I preached like this before, and when I raised those topics, I saw some people just took their bag. I've seen it everywhere. Not they just ah, carry their bag and go out. It has even happened today because I was I was expecting the person that would go. I see that everywhere. When I raise these matters, some people will just. Say, lest we come into an environment we don't understand. It happens everywhere. May the Lord help us in the name of Jesus Christ. Part of what the devil is trying to do is to infiltrate the church. Because we all have a loss. When you hear somebody is a prophet, it means he has secrets to give. We don't care to check the source of the secret. So this girl, she came to Paul and his companions in the hour of prayer. These people that are diviners that I speak about can actually feign every, the highest levels of spirituality. It will take only the discernment that comes by the Spirit of God to be able to know them. By any other means, you, will, you cannot know them. Are you with me? All right, so that's what divination is. The next practice classified as magic is called astrology. No, I was too fast. Let's still rest on divination. I find out that in Africa, it's one of the commonest expressions of magic. This divination is encountered most frequently in contemporary mass society in the form of one, horoscopes. Who knows horoscope? They don't do it again. Those days in newspapers, what do they call those? Your star. Are you Leo? Are you Sagittarius? Huh? Scorpio? Spices? Which one again? What? Cancer. Now, and then they will tell you that on Tuesdays, this kind of thing is going to happen to you. Those are horoscopes, viewing through Satan's lens. And because Satan knows that there is an appetite in every man for knowledge that is secret, it will always sell. Thank God for Christian publishers that began to rise in Nigeria and became head of publishing houses and they deleted horoscopy. If not, horoscopy was becoming big business in Nigeria. It's not in every newspaper around the world that there were such people. It has grown from what it was 
It is now a system, horoscopy. So you wake up buying a newspaper just because you want to check your staff for the day. So the first manifestation of, di of divination is horoscopy. And most of you still do it online. They come and say, um, there are some things I saw on Facebook. It's the introduction of horoscopy. Because divination wants to manifest again. And you'll be amazed the number of believers that subscribe to those things. In, in the name of, it will not affect your salvation. The second expression of divination that is in contemporary mass society is what we call palm reading. Palm reading. Palm reading. So we don't check up our possibilities on horoscopes. We don't read palms. The third is what we call Bible turning. Bible turning. When we were in secondary school, there was a Bible turning priest in our dormitory. He was very dedicated to the to the articles of Bible turning. Very, he was very dedicated. So whenever something gets missing, they call the priest. The priest will first ask all of you, "Are you are you guilty? Are you?" And he will take a verbal confession before he begins his act. <laughs> And, uh, you know, those days in the hostel that I was, there's a place they call box room. That's where all the boxes are supposed to be. But the house captains will remove all the boxes and say, you take care of your box. And he uses the box room as his own personal apartment. So when they want to do Bible turning, it's in the box room. So you have limited access. You will sit outside. It's when the results come out that you'll be told that. So it was a hard load. <laughs> was a very hallowed thing. And it came to pass one day that they did Bible turning and one guy Sander that was lost since our eh, SS1. They used Bible turning to find it. The moment they found it, they believed that Bible turning was the way to gain wisdom. So anything that happens, they will just go pay the guy money. He will just say, are you, are you guilty? Are you, is there guilt on you? <laughs> And then they'll be waiting for the key of box room. You will see people, 20 people, waiting for the answer. Say, what, what, what's after this? <laughs> because there is a lust in the heart of humankind to seek secret knowledge. Meanwhile, the Bible says that Jesus is the compendium of all wisdom and knowledge. All the riches of wisdom, all the riches of knowledge are encapsulated in one person. Well, this one is no longer too um, common here, crystal gazing. There's something that, that is called a crystal ball. Well, the African version of a crystal ball is in form of a calabash that water is in it. And the spirits of seances are invoked and the platform of the, the face of the water becomes a screen where you can watch people, the people of interest, I'll show you that they are going to the market, I'll show you that. Are you with me? And somebody was in the heart of, of New York in America. And he refused to come home to visit his mother for 17 years. And his mother called him on the phone. When he called him, he said, I can see your dog is close to you. He said, yes. The mother took something like a toothpick and struck the dog in the water. The dog died. He said, I can see your dog has died. The man checked. And then the mother told him, if I had wanted to kill you, the way I killed this dog, that's how I would have killed you. So you think your mother is a witch. That's why you're not coming home. Don't you know a witch can kill you where you are? That's how the young man started coming. <laughs> That's what we call crystal gazing. Now all these things I'm teaching you are going to form 
objects of prayer points this night. I've woken up before and I, I knew I was being watched. So I know the prayers of pray. And I brought blindness upon that facility. If you do it properly, the person gazing will lose fiscal sight. If you do it, pro do it properly. I brought blindness. Hallelujah. All right, so we have crystal gazing, um, and then we have, you will not know this one. How many of you went to the University of Ibadan? It was in the library. Okay, no, no you are a person here. It's called the Uja board, Uja board. The Uja board is like Scrabble, it's a board game. Are you with me? But you play the game with the spirit. And there are rules to follow. When you follow the rules, then the spirit is going to help you, give you some information that you never knew before. So what's the name of your great-grandfather? The spirit, meanwhile, there's a candle light that you need to, to light. And then when the spirit comes, the candle, will, the candle, the light will move like this. So you know the spirit has come. So okay, what is the name of... And the thing has A, B, C, D, E, F, 2, Z. Do you know what I'm talking about? Um, B, can you... Uh, use your internet to find an Uja board. O-U-I-J-A. Board. And then put it on the screen for the people to see. So I will show you something about... Okay, no, don't put it on the screen. They will go and look for it. Somebody will try it. So it's better for you to know it. Just know it. There's something like that. <laughs> now it has A, B, C, D to Z. So when the spirit comes, the spirit will answer. Okay, you ask... What is the name of my grandfather? The spirit will now spell A, this, that, this, 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 that. It's not a human being playing, no. The, thing, the wisdom is coming out, this, 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 and then you write it down. Then this is the name of... And you can go and conduct the research. You'll find that same name. It is divination. What the devil is doing now is try to make magic user-friendly. Builds it into games, builds it into movies, Builds it. If I watch a movie and I see something, I know them. But you don't know. Meanwhile, divination is more effective on you if you don't know it, if you can't identify it. And I've seen many people there. What do they call this cartoon? There's one cartoon. Okay, you. Okay, there are so many names now. There's one common one, it's just occultic, just fully occultic. Because wizards and warlocks are no longer patient. They are coming out of the hiding. They are writing best-selling books. Have you heard of the 48 Laws of Power? Very, very intelligent warlocks wrote those books. Have you heard of the Art of Seduction? It's an improvement on 48 Laws of Power. So they are, they are encapsulating the wisdom from darkness in books right now. And pastors are rushing it as manuals for the administration of ministry. So you can, ex you can understand how the corruption is coming. The art of seduction. How to make people do things with different influences. You understand what I'm talking about? All right. So those are five contemporary um, manifestations of divination. The horoscopy, palm reading, Bible turning, crystal gazing, and uja ball. Did you succeed? We. Oui. You found it? Can you project it? Please try. Please try. It's, uh, it's more prevalent in, in the West, in the US, in Europe. But if you, if you access a very good library, you'll find a lot of them. Because they ship them across the world to literary centers to aid education. So it's an educative tool. If you know how to use it, you'll find the name of your great-grandfather. The devil's invitation thrives on an inner lost in humankind to seek secret knowledge. All right, let's jump, let's jump quickly. Oh, my time is up.
so bad. Um, where are we? Okay, if you allow me, I take more time. Do we have a, a popular vote in that regard? All right, so we have astrology. Astrology. It's the belief that an understanding of the influence of the planets, stars, and moon have on earthly affairs and the accurate interpretation of the alignment of the sun, moon, and star and the planets gives the astrologer the ability to predict and to effect destinies of individuals, of groups, and nations. Now, listen to me. Listen to me. Most of what we are suffering in Nigeria is as a result of astrology. How many of you have stayed in the north before? Stayed in the north of Nigeria before? How many of you stayed in Zaria before? Zaria. Did you visit Kuspa? Do you know that there's a place like Kuspa? That's the congregation of some of the most, the strongest astrologers of stature. Most of the dynamics of our failure as a nation is tied to the use of astrology as an instrument of control. Are you still with me? Okay, you're not with me. Now, let me try, let me try, let me try. Let's try to go to Deuteronomy chapter 33. Let's try. Are you there? Deuteronomy chapter 33 from verse 13. 13. This is the blessing of Joseph, all right? He say, and of Joseph he said, no, who is he? Moses. Moses is blessing the tribes before his death. So this is what the blessing that came upon Joseph. What did Moses say? And of Joseph he said, blessed of the Lord be his land for the precious things of heaven, for the dew, for the deep that coucheth beneath. Next verse there. And for the precious fruits brought forth by what? The sun. And for the precious things put forth by what? Now, according to this arrangement, the moon is the investment platform. The sun is the return on investment platform. You didn't get that? All right, so... During that, that's why astrology is in the night. Eh? So the incantations they do in the night, it, it programs the coming morning. Oh. Okay. Don't worry. Let's forget about it. The, you see, if you want to stay, if you stay where astrology prospers, the first symptom that you are going to find in an area that is rigged up by astrology is that you can make money, but you cannot take the money outside of that place. You will spend it there. When you go to a place like Singa in Kano, you will see money outside like this, but it's protected by astrology. Huh? Boko Haram can visit Singa because it is protected by astrology. In astrology, Encoding takes place through the moon, and decoding takes place when the sun rises. So an astrologer can program tomorrow this night. Because in the moon, he, he puts forth so that he can bring forth through the sun. Oh my. Okay, leave that. If you didn't get it, forget about it. Forget about it. There are several prayers and several times of prayers that if you are going to survive in an area that is rigged with astrology, at least you must wake up before 5 a.m. That's not mandated here in Makodi. Huh? But if you are living in some places, you must wake up before 5 a.m. Before they pollute the atmosphere, you must gain your grip of the parachute that will take you beyond the influence of that which is used to manage the place and manage the space. 
In regions where astrology prospers, you will find a very wide gap between the rich and the poor. And the rich will use the riches, their riches as an instrument to manipulate the poor. And perpetually you will find that there are some families that wallow in riches and there are some families that their destiny is poverty. Have you ever heard that scripture? When it said there's an evil under the sun? How that servants ride on horseback and princes walk on foot is called astrology. That's what astrology does. It, 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 um, it inverts possibility. Okay, check Nigeria now. The, peop- the person ruling in Nigeria, is, is that the person that has the capacity to rule a nation like Nigeria? But it doesn't matter whether he has the capacity or not. When those factors are put in place, you will find scholars, professors, people that have what it takes to drive the land, their place will be to work on food. Servants, we ride on husband. Are you with me? Okay, you don't, you don't, okay. You want me to come with the scripture and say, God bless you, amen. <laughs> That's what you want. When you get old, you know the pastor, the safety. That next week, something, you will see an alert will just come. That's not how God blesses people. If God is going to bless you, he's going to add work to the equation. That's why gambling, gambling, you see, you see, you see, you see, forgive us our trespasses. Is it not Jesus that said that? What's, it, what's trespass? Using a shortcut. Because if you are going to use a shortcut, you are going to pass through my compound. You are trespassing my boundary. Is that true? So in gambling, there is a shortcut. The work element of success is removed. So the person just comes and then he does something. Then he goes beyond. He trespasses work, the work element to get an instant result. Most of what we preach as prosperity is something that is instant result based. It is trespass. That next week you receive a phone call. Something that doesn't have work involved. If God wants to make you prosper, what he will do is that he will give you an idea of what to do. Whatsoever he laid his hand upon to do, he shall prosper. So he will give you an idea of what to do. Meanwhile, our concept of prosperity is a phone call. A test message. So we say amen to phone calls next week, amen to text messages. The work element is still gambling, it's trespass. Please help me tell your neighbor, smell the coffee, wake up. Even if there's a supernatural anointing upon your life for prosperity, God will reveal to you what to do. If there's no doing element, it is MMM. <laughs> May the Lord give you understanding. So when we think prosperity, we think productivity. What can I do that God is willing to bless? That's how to pray that prayer. And then God showed me, opened my eyes and showed me my own. Meanwhile, I have not started what he showed me. It's very easy to prosper when you know the Holy Spirit. He will tell you what to do. Sometimes he can tell you, if go and borrow dollars. And then next week, a servant comes on horseback and one dollar becomes 500. Then you sell without doing anything. What you did was that you heard, took strategic action. What wisdom does is that it removes sweat from the work. But the work cannot be removed from the equation. You don't understand. Wisdom does what? God doesn't have, there's no value for your sweat. He doesn't need to accumulate it to form goodwill. <laughs> Are you with me? That's where wisdom comes. Wisdom will tell you when to stand, when to walk away, 
when to run. It will tell you what to do and when so to do. But you cannot take work out of the equation of prosperity. If you check the story of the children of Israel, they were in the land of bondage. And in their captivity, they learned skills. Is that true? Learned how to do things. And then when they went into the promised land, they have already gotten skills. And the promised hand, land had raw materials. Raw material plus skill is what? Productivity. That's how it works. You don't want to produce anything. You don't want wisdom in any area. I want to tell you that even as a public servant, I prayed more than most of you. Most of you believe that your occupation now is prayer. But I'm telling you that as a public servant, I prayed more than you. Because prayer is the Christian culture. That's what we do. Right? We also have a calling towards developing the estate in which we find ourselves. And for that, we will need the wisdom of God. So you cannot take our work outside of the equation of prosperity. And it's our God that makes rich and he adds the sorrow to Did you get that? All right, so let me try to round up astrology. Astrology, this type of divination, this is the type of divination that involves the forecasting of earthly and human events through the observation and interpretation of the fixed stars. And by fixed stars, I'm talking about the sun, the moon, the stars, and the planets. Sun, the moon. So that thing you are seeing on the screen is called the Uji board. Somebody say Uji board. Now, when the spirit comes and begins to play, that lever will begin to move. Can we have the first, the first uh, example? That lever there will begin to move over the letters. Eh? A. You know, there's no name that you cannot spell with the alphabet. The alphabet contains every name. Is that true? So the lever there begins to spell out the name corresponding to the question that you're asking. And when, and it will not be done by human hand. It will be done by something mysterious. A spirit of divination will come to share fellowship with you and it will begin to unveil hidden knowledge. And I said that the human soul, uh, part of what led to our fall and part of the trappings of the human soul in the fall is the desire for such knowledge that is secret, that is beyond our reach. And when you begin to see that such a facility has access to such knowledge, you will find that it is very easy for you to become addicted to it and you'll be entertaining demons unawares. Entertaining what? Demons. Even in the prophetic, if you come to the stage with an intention to say something, you're already wrong. You want to show the people that God has spoken to you. You are corrupt already. You are not a vessel that is pure. The flesh has stained your outlet. Your outlet has been borrowed. Satan can flow through the vent. And the way to close the power of the flesh before you preach is to speak in tongues and speak in tongues long. 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 And I found out that one hour of speaking in tongues before you preach is a good antidote. Good antidote to ready you as a vessel. If the people listening to you will hear the voice of God again and again. And there's a texture. There's a texture that the voice of the Lord sustains. And when you hear it in your heart of hearts, we know that this man's vocal cord is communicating the mind of God. If you're going to be like that, then you must pay the price of intercession. This intercession we're talking about is not so that you can receive the word of the Lord. There's another practice with which you can receive, by which you can receive the word of the Lord. I'm talking about preparing your heart to become a conduit through which God can pass. After you have secured the word, the word of the Lord, you still need to go for another round of one hour of prayer so that you can blot out every outlet of the flesh. 
And if these practices are not sustained, a time can come when the presence of God leaves. And everything we will say about God is, will be in the past. Some time ago, God, some time ago, that will not be a portion. In the name of Jesus. Astrologers believe that an understanding of the influence of the planets and stars on earthly affairs allows them both to predict and affect destinies of individuals, of groups, and nations. And so what astrologers do is that they check the alignment of the sun, moon, and star. And they get understanding of the things that are about to happen upon the face of the earth. Should I tell you where they got that from? Hmm? Genesis chapter 1. That's where they got it from. Go, Genesis 1.14. Please help me quickly. And God said, let there be lights in the firmament of heaven to divide the day from the night and let there be four signs. The primary purpose for which the lights were set up there was not to give light. It was to give signs. So when you hear of these signs, you know, in the book of of Joel, Joel chapter 2, when the Bible says, and there shall be signs in the heavens, fire. And pillars of smoke. For the sun shall become darkness and the moon into blood. You know, the moon becoming blood, that's a blood moon, it's a sign. The sun becoming dark, that is an eclipse, it's a sign. So astrologers can interpret these signs. Meanwhile, in the New Testament, the Bible reveals that signs follow us. If something is following you, it means the thing is behind you, following. We don't look to signs. What do we do? Signs follow us. An astrologer looks to, to signs and begins to operate by the interpretation of signs. We are ahead of those signs. So the Bible is, a, is full <coughs> of the miscalculations of the devil. Because if the devil needs to operate, he needs to operate by science. But we, science follow us. We are ahead of the science. We move before the science form. We pick what is happening in the heavens from the mouth of God before the circumstances in the heavens that need to collocate to bring it to pass begin to form. We are ahead of astrologers. They can't read us from the charts, from, from the crystal ball, from in the instruments of darkness. They will be short of giving your full description. And so the Bible indeed is full of miscalculations where the devil made attempts. But the Bible says that if the princes of this world had known, they wouldn't have crucified the Lord of glory. It means that Jesus was operating in an economy of reality that was far removed from the signs and the glimpses that witches, that mutter and seances that people have access to. Walking in the spirit is the greatest insulation, the greatest covering, the greatest insurance that a believer has. Because signs follow us. We do not what? Follow signs. I'm looking for a scripture to close with. The scripture is coming to me now. Let me look for it in a moment. Give me two minutes. Two minutes, please. Um, Jeremiah chapter 10. Verse 2. I'm going to end there. Jeremiah came into a city where the children of Israel had begun to subscribe to astrology. This was his message to them. Where are you? He said, Thus said the Lord, learn not the way of the hidden. 
and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven. For the hidden are dismayed by them. He said, learn not the way of the hidden and be thou not, what? Dismayed by the signs of heaven. Astrology operates through signs. And when you find a very good astrologer, he only sees the sun in every 17 years. Because it takes 17 years for a blue moon to come. And a blue moon is when the full moon appears in one month twice. It takes 17 years cycle for that to be accomplished. And the astrologer doesn't see the sun for until the blue moon comes. It means his ministry ends after 17 years. Then a younger astrologer will be taught the art and he will go into the control room. It is from there that they give prophecies to kings. They give instructions to monarchs. They give pathways to princes. But Jeremiah said, we shall not be dismayed. We shall not be overtaken by the signs of heaven. Because we ourselves are the signs. Have you read the book of Isaiah? Oh, you have not read. Since you have not read it, let me not, let me not take you there. Okay, but you understand when the Bible says from the time of John the Baptist and until now, the manifestation of John the Baptist was an initializing of a certain season. As long as John was in the wilderness, that season had not started. But when he came, timing began. And so when you want to count the time or take inventory of the time, when violence was, spiritual violence was legalized, it was with the rise of John. It means every son of the kingdom that comes into his full age of manifestation he is actually pointing to something that heaven is doing. It's a sign from heaven. I'm going to stop here. I have a lot for us to learn. First prayer point. If, if anybody has ever gone to inquire about you, from darkness, and they used an instrument. They used a crystal ball. They used, um, they gazed upon water through the spirits that peep. Spirits that mutter. They have spoken wickedness into your future. Huh? If that has ever happened, oh, you are not with me. Then we are going to pray, just in case it has happened. Oh my. You are going to give me 30 minutes, okay? Because I want us to travel today. The atmosphere is good today. Jesus. Oh, may your eyes not be blind. Santo. <laughs> so if they've ever viewed you through an instrument, through a crystal ball. Through an instrument, a monitoring instrument. Sometimes a monitoring instrument can be a living creature, a pet, an all. And it's used to, the person is a wog that uses the eyes of that all through witchcraft to view, to create surveillance in the night around your area. If there has ever been a time where people monitored you, and they took information on the strength of the things that they saw. Let them become blind. Yeah. These are days of spiritual warfare. So we are going to pray that prayer. Let blindness come upon anyone that used any form of an instrument to monitor to look upon you, to see your possibility, to see your potential, so that they can fight you from the advantage of insight. Let blindness, let blindness, let blindness, let blindness, let blindness, let blindness. Let blindness.
You are not praying. So say hey to Kopela Masula. So say Mantelora. Anyone that saw you. We destroy the instrument. We destroy the vision. We bring blindness. Sabole kile bakuna. Yeso salabaka pantele. Rus kapeli aburi asiko menite kompala masanda babor. Zamina kori abres kombela amai. Sheliela la boma mala. Jali eso sali mabor. Ere ere bo mala ere. So many Rosen Ali Maramo Salem, my apple Rosen Mali Alasco Bella Babay Elia Comes and Aboros.